Welcome to Suerte del Molino, a farm in Andalusia, Spain. Let's see what exciting things we are up to. So there's a lot of seeds that we just put in all these pots. As you can see, there's probably about a hundred pots here and they're all full of probably 10 different types of seeds or more. Um, I spent the last few days, maybe a week or so, planting mostly trees. I think, I actually think all of them are tree species, which is really exciting because it's the rainy season now and a lot of these things are going to be happy to sprout and be ready to plant for the spring. So if we get half of them to come up, there's going to be 300 new trees. And that's pretty exciting because with the type of trees that are in these pots, which is mostly leguminous, nitrogen fi fixing species, it's going to add a lot of new fertility to this landscape. And they're all fast growing, so I'm really excited to see what happens. Um, I'll just show you around so you can see. All of these pots right here are labeled with wooden sticks all this way, one through ten. Okay, and all of these things with uh, wooden posts are seeds that I brought from California. So I can attest that they work and that they are all from trees that I have personally touched and grabbed the seeds from. So that's cool to me. I'm literally, uh, you know, helping the trees give birth in a different country. <clears throat> and then a lot of the other species that we have are things that Martin had already or things that we actually collected together this week so over here we have a bunch of carob seeds a um, bunch of those and in each square pot I planted nine seeds so three rows of three um, that's actually pretty tight planting my guess is that most of them are gonna come up like probably 75% plus are going to sprout. It's probably some of them closer to 95%. Uh, that's what I've noticed with a lot of these uh, tree species. Um, then we also have this whole row of Vachalia Karu. All of the seeds were collected by Martin um, from his own trees off this farm. So this is a, a new, another generation of trees already being born on this farm. Then we have honey locusts. So those are actually considered to be an invasive species by a lot of people. But I think that they still have a lot of value, especially in a degraded landscape. So they're going to provide shade. They're going to provide nitrogen to the soil and a wise phrase that I heard from Martin himself no tree can run faster than a chainsaw can chop it down I think that's how it goes <laughs> so um, yeah and then we also have tamarind in both of these things right here hello here we have golden flame tree or Chinese flame tree or golden rain tree. There's a lot of common names, but if you know what it is, then you know what it is. Then there's cherimoya or custard apple. That's not really a legume tree, but we had it. We like it. <laughs> yeah. I've actually never eaten a cherimoya, so I don't know I don't know. I've seen them, I know what they look like, but I've never eaten one. Um more golden flame tree. Or golden rain tree then there's black locusts which has much smaller seeds 
Um, I hope they come up, but I don't know because they were so small, I wasn't able to scarify them. And I think in a previous video, you saw me working on the, the, the belt sander to put a little hole in these seeds because a lot of these seeds come in pods and they have, they're really hard. Like you could not break them with your teeth. Like they're tough. So they need to be sanded to open up to allow the water in. And then we also have brachychitin. I do, I'm not sure exactly what species it is, but it's a, an Australian bottle tree. Those are cool. Um, they're cool. Uh, and then we have some box elders right here. Uh, it's, it's actually a type of maple, but you wouldn't think that based on the leaves because they don't look like maple leaves. But they still have the classic wing-shaped seeds. Um, and I do want to show you two things that have already sprouted <laughs> within the past, since I planted them five or six days ago. <laughs> Doesn't look like much, but this is already coming up right here. And another one here. That one closed now. It's, it's closed, it's but sunset. maybe it's just shy. Yeah. And then another two over here. These are really, I'm really excited about these. I don't know what the name is. Maybe we can put it in the video description if I find it, but they're coming up. So it's just a matter of time. And there's also some stuff in the sand pit. I don't know if you want to go over there. Sure. Okay. So in addition to all of these pots, there is a pit of sand and I planted probably like 150 tr trees right here, tree seeds. So on this side we have red bud, European red bud, red bud or they also call it Judas tree. And then on this side is more box alder. So. And this is the sorry, the Judas tree I planted here a year ago. So uh, it's also called the love tree, isn't it? Uh, yeah, yes. because the, the the leaves are shaped like hearts. Ah, okay. That's why. Okay. Okay. I mean, look at that. Yeah. A little heart. Okay. Right, and. What will it look like when you come back in five years and I've planted all these? Well, I mean, hopefully there will be a lot uh, less gaps in the shade, the shade canopy. Because, I mean, I think I was pretty smart to come here not during the middle of summer. Um, because I didn't want to deal with being baked in the sun. I wanted to actually dig in some soil that could be worked. So not that there isn't jobs to do during the summer. So don't let that detract you. But I knew that I would be more useful at this time of the year. So I think that in three, five years, some of these trees could be 20 feet tall and they are just little seeds right now. And there is, honestly, there's like no greater act than planting a, tr a tree or a seed. And once you do it, it's like the work is pretty much done. Like all you have to do is water it a little bit, but there's no downside in planting a seed. So, you know, once it's done, it's like, oh, it's out of the way. And now you can worry about other things and not like think about having to like order these big trees like coming all coming in here and it's so much more work to like dig holes with a shovel. I mean, you're going to eventually have to do that anyway. I'm talking too much. Basically, it's going to be there's going to be a lot of growth and I'm sure you'll see it on this channel and I can't wait to see what it becomes.
So I'm actually leaving tomorrow morning. So see ya. I had fun. Thank you, gents. It was great to have you here and for all your help and seeds and plants and trees and yeah, what a big project. I'm so pleased that we have done this. It's actually just the beginning. Of what? Well, because these are all of the pioneer species. So this isn't even what the ultimate goal is. You know, like I said before, you're going to chop a lot of them down maybe one day. So it's more about just creating fertility in the soil. And then once their use has been realized, you can make room for more dainty species or more things that fruit trees. yeah fruit <laughs> like fruity <laughs> some fruity trees or or then you then you start really developing the other layers of the canopy or the understory plants like bushes and just as it's good great have a safe trip and i'll let you know sounds good <laughs> Ciao. Ciao.